Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, at Shore Soivis, to describe for you a technique that I find useful in some cases for evaluating antennas, at least from a theoretical sense. It's called antenna morphing antenna morphing. And what I'd like to show you is how we can morph a ground plane antenna to a coaxial antenna and observe the characteristics as we go. A typical ground plane antenna has a quarter wavelength radiating element and three or more, usually three or four, quarter wavelength radials. I'm only showing two of them here for simplicity. The angle between the vertical element and the radials is 90 degrees so that the radials themselves are horizontal. This will present in the ideal case as long as the elevation of the antenna above the surface of the earth is at least one quarter of a wavelength. As long as that's the case, we'll get a feed point impedance here similar to what we would get over perfectly conducting ground, that is approximately 37 ohms, purely resistive at the resonant frequency. Now suppose that we take these radial wires, or <laughs> not wires usually, they're aluminum tubing or something for say the 14 megahertz band and we begin to droop them. We droop them all to the same extent so that this angle increases from 90 degrees to 100 degrees eventually to 135 degrees which would be the equivalent of a 45 degree droop. That would make the antenna look something like that. Of course these radials stay the same length, a quarter of a wavelength long, and now our feed point impedance is greater. It increases to approximately 50 ohms, which is just about a perfect match to 50 ohm coaxial cable, which in most cases will go to the radio. As you increase the droop, the feed point impedance remains purely resistive but increases gradually and at a certain point, I'm not sure if it's exactly a 45 degree droop, it will pass the 50 ohm point, in which case you'll have a perfect one-to-one -one standing wave ratio on your feed line. Now as you further increase the droop past the 135 degree angle or 45 degree droop, your feed point impedance continues to remain purely resistive and it continues to increase until finally if you make those radial wires actually vertical just outside the coaxial cable itself and then as long as you've got vertical radials right around the coax you can make a hollow aluminum tubing right around your coax with a length or a height rather of at least a quarter of a wavelength well, not at least, exactly a quarter of a wavelength. The height of the antenna above the Earth is exactly a quarter of a wavelength or more. Well, <laughs> at least a quarter of a wavelength. Let's take it from there. Obviously, if it's less than a quarter of a wavelength, you're not going to be able to make a length of tubing stay above the surface of the Earth for its entire span. So, preferably this height the height of the feed point above the surface of the earth should be substantially more 
than a quarter of a wavelength. To prevent any question of whether you're going to have problems or not. But once you get to this point where you have a 180 degree angle, the greatest possible, uh, or a vertical slope to your, quote, radial wires, which are now all solidified into actually an infinite number of them, or infinitely many of them, all solidified into a length of tubing. Once you have an antenna like that, you have what is called a coaxial antenna. Now that doesn't mean that the antenna is made of coaxial cable. It means that it's coaxial in the sense that the radials are coaxial with the center conductor of the coax, which is also coaxial with the shield of the coax, which is just inside this vertical uh, radial tubing. Now that is what you call a coaxial antenna, and it has a purely resistive impedance of approximately 73 ohms at the feed point, or twice the original 37 ohms that we had when the radials were horizontal. And the same 73 ohms that you would get with a half-wave dipole antenna, because the overall height of this is in fact a half a wavelength. And in effect you have a vertical dipole antenna. That's what you really have here. It's exactly the same thing as a coaxial antenna, except the coaxial antenna is fed through one of its two sides. The feed line actually runs through one side of the dipole. In that case, you will not get antenna currents on the feed line shield, as you would if you ran a feed line at something other than a 90 degree angle away from a regular dipole. In effect, you can't get any electromagnetic field at all inside of this length of tubing because everything cancels out. So this is almost the perfect way to feed a half-wave dipole and a perfect method for a vertical dipole. And with this overall height of a half a wavelength, you are going to get excellent low angle radiation and reception just as you would with an ordinary vertical dipole. The best you possibly can for a vertical antenna measuring a half wavelength tall. So that's the low down, the up high, and the sort of middle altitude evaluation of antenna morphing ground plane to coaxial. Stan Jibalisco W1GV saying 73 which of course means best regards in ham radio lingo and so long which in my favorite language means da 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 da